What's the role of intelligence in all of this? FBI, CIA, the Chinese intelligence uh, agencies. Right now, Mexico is going through a, a nationalistic resurgence and a leftist presidency, which is not friendly to U.S. interests in a lot of ways. The U.S. has had a pretty bad track record when it's, with its foreign policy in Mexico, with a lot of damage being done by the last president as far as his rhetoric. Uh, Donald Trump? Which has been weaponized and utilized by the by the left down down in Mexico. So, so America is not seen uh, positively. No. Every now and then I post something about Mexico, some horrible thing happening down there. It's like, why doesn't U.S. send people down there? Like, are Mexicans looking for like U.S. intervention? It's like, no. That is beyond what anybody in Mexico would want. As, as specifically, you see that the sentiment out there. They don't view the U.S. as a as somebody that's going to come in and fix anything, or somebody that's going to help, or as a friend. Uh, with the when the Ukrainian ha uh, conflict happened, uh, Mexico basically abstained from saying anything, which is a wink and a nod to Russia. It has openly been pro Maduro and openly celebrated to some of these uh, regimes be popping up uh, across uh, Latin America. You know, which is. That is what people voted for. That is a sentiment down there. They're going towards the left of the political spectrum because of they've been basically violated over and over again by all these different presidencies that have promised change, brought corruption with them, and they are out of choices. So this is this is the best we have right now. Uh, and all of the enemies of the United States are taking full advantage of that. You know, we recently had a general kind of address a Senate committee hearing, I think. He was talking about the prevalence of uh, foreign intelligence services in Mexico, you know, and why that is. Well, you know, it has, Mexico has a lot of the mineable lithium on the planet underneath uh, parts of it, specifically in the north. It, uh, it is going through a process, uh, they call it the La Cuarta Transformación, the fourth, the fourth transformation is what the president of Mexico calls it, which is, uh, in a way, it's basically we're here to stay type thing. You know, they just uh, nationalize mining lithium and taking control of that and using that as leverage. If, if the United States ever wants to go to Mexico, it's probably not going to be related to cartel issues. It's going to probably be related to energy, I think. You know, so they're kind of thinking ahead, I guess. Well, what about also, just imagine a world where India and China are doing fentanyl trade with Mexico or whatever transport. Imagine Chinese military moves, makes an agreement, a NATO type of agreement with Mexico. That's pretty possible. Uh, again, we're seeing a militarized Mexico. It's another aspect of Mexico that, again, I haven't seen talked about a lot here in the US. The main problem is that the current president had was he was going to make the police, the federal police, and the 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 the, the security issues in Mexico civil, civilian. He was going to do exactly the opposite as his main rival, Felipe Calderon, the guy that started off the drug war officially. And what does he do? He dissolves the civilian leadership of the federal police, dissolves the federal police, creates the National Guard, which is a military unit, and he puts the military in charge of that. Now the military has a full monopoly over all federal policing. There, it, when you cross into Mexico, you'll see them wearing these white camouflage uniforms. Those are those are National Guard people, but they're 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 the military. So you, now you're seeing a militarized Mexico with some of these leaks that happened during the Wakamaya uh, the Wakamaya leaks. You're now seeing that Mexico has been hosting members of the Haitian military, and they've been training them up to go back to police their country. That's not something that Mexico has been known for to hosting other nations and and, and training them in such a way. So it's like an, it's a it's a it's an interesting maneuver. Like Mexico has been historically neutral about getting involved in foreign conflicts. Um, about voting and resolutions as far as invading or not invading or doing all these things. Mexico has been historically kind of neutral when it comes to some of these things. And now we're training foreign military uh, forces to go and do that role somewhere else. Um, we have the military building airports and building infrastructure in Mexico and a lot of their higher ups getting very you know wealthy around it, you know? And they basically have a monopoly over 
you know, who gets to have guns down there. You know, there's one gun store in all Mexico and it's run by the military. And the only way you can buy a gun there is if you can buy a plane ticket to fly there and have enough money to sustain that uh, that right or that privilege. So you, you're you seeing the military not being in its traditional role of just being the security force. Now it's policing. It's involved in, it's, a, it's, a, it's a getting involved in politics in a big way. You know, it's uh, legislation that has passed to keep it on the streets and a policing role for more years now. So that should be looked at closer by anybody observing it uh, from afar, the, how the militarization of Mexico and where it's going. Because if you move towards a world where a World War Three happens, it feels like Mexico would be the center because a hot war would be fought on the ground. And so you have a very difficult parallel between Mexico and Ukraine. Both don't have nuclear weapons, both have relationships. So Ukraine has a relationship or a pull towards the European Union and NATO. Mexico, at least currently, has a kind of slow pull towards China, India potentially, and Russia. And you have this divide between power centers in the world. And in terms of, just imagine hundreds of thousands of Mexican troops, hundreds of thousands of Chinese troops on the border, on the US border. Yeah. On the Mexican side. And also the fact that that border doesn't mean anything to any sort of conflict uh, that would happen regionally because that that's a very easy to cross border. doesn't matter how many walls you put across it. People are already here. Uh, this is not going to be a war fought off in some overseas place. Like you're not going to, this is something if, if it happens, if destabilization is utilized in Mexico, to cause a conflict there. And it turns into a Vietnam or a proxy war down there of a sort, which I think in a way you're already kind of seeing some of that uh, through some of the conflicts going on down there. You have a, a, a new generation cartel that is being fed fentanyl from the, the Pacific side ports. And and it's suspiciously, you know, you, you, you want to think that maybe it's favored by a foreign government of some sort uh, in some way, shape or form, uh, who knows? And then you have a historically in control Sinaloa cartel that uh, may or may not be favored by the U.S. in some way, shape, or form. You can imagine a further conflict down there and people fostering it and seeing the effects of basically setting a fire on the feet of the United States. Its second largest consumer of U.S. products is Mexico. Um, the massive wave of immigration that is going to be basically weaponized uh, you know, you saw the collapse of the border security structure with a contingent of 3,000 Honduran, Guatemalan immigrants in that first wave of uh, caravans coming to Tijuana. You saw it was it was pretty bad, you know. It was pretty bad, and it could have gotten worse. Now, what is going to happen when that wave is no not no longer 3,000, but, you know, a million people being displaced by violence or being in fear of whatever conflict might originate down there and just that massive uh, wave of migration and move. Like, I think that that's an, that's an interesting thing that people should look at and, you know, how can you affect change to try and stop some of the, uh, this, these things to happen? 